Hi everybody, welcome back to Life After Neverland. I hope this is finding you happy and healthy. So we're talking about the Masked Singer. We're in the quarterfinals here. I, I'm gonna have this episode just be an episode where we talk about the contestants and we don't sit and analyze who we think they are because at this point we already know who they are. And that tends to be the norm here. We're in season five and we always really, I mean, am I right? You can go online, you can look at all the different other YouTubers who follow The Masked Singer or cover The Masked Singer, and we always know who they are pretty much right off the bat, really. Um, I remember back in the beginning, I had a hard time sometimes, and there were some celebrities that I truly loved, like, for example, Brett Michaels. I didn't even know it was him. But now, I they need to really make it a little bit harder. I, I always feel like their clues are tricky, but I can usually always figure out who they are with enough Google searching. Uh, even if I don't even know, there's been so many times, you guys, that the contestants are people I have no idea who they are. In this season, <laughs> uh, with Khalifa, I have no idea who he is. Omarion, I have no idea who he is. But I really feel strongly that those are the people inside that costume simply by doing the research and connecting the clues. So maybe do the clues need to be a little bit harder? I don't know, and I'd love to know what you guys think uh, in the comment section, join in on this conversation. We're gonna get started watching the show, and I'd love for you to stick around with me. We'll keep it short today. But also, too, if you have a moment to hit that subscribe button, we would be grateful. Hang out with us for a little bit longer. We cover other TV shows, The Chosen, if you like that sort of thing, and also Big Brother coming up here this summer, which we're very excited about. Uh, but we also do some funny, goofy things, my husband and I, and we sprinkle them in between some of our TV viewing. All right, let's get started, and thank you in advance for your subscription. So now they call them the Feisty Five, and last week it was the Spicy Six. So what do you guys think four is? The Fabulous Four? <laughs> Who? Oh wait. Hmm? Oh, it's a beard that threw me off. For me, I would like the guest judges to be prior contestants. I think that would make it really fun. I and mean, maybe they can't come on as a guest, but some of these guest judges are just like blah for me. What happened to the Glee cast? Wouldn't you guys love to see some Glee people on the show? Or what about some pop stars? Like some legit pop stars? Like, I'm just like, no, I'm just... You could fit a baker's dozen Kens in there. <laughs> The only thing that's really keeping me into this show right now are actually the Russian Dolls and the Black Swan. That's it this season. They've done such a great job on this show, so they have actually made this show entertaining. But I do think it's really cool when they show inside the costume and what they can see. Imagine dancing. So on The Masked Dancer, imagine what it's like for them. That show was actually good. You guys, that show is actually entertaining, believe it or not. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? I gave it a try. And I was pleasantly surprised. Oh my gosh, the people in the audience, <laughs> they're so fake. It's so fun to be like. About as cheesy as I am, but mine's real. I'm not fake. <laughs> I'm naturally cheesy. Have you guys noticed that this season, Nicole seems to guess almost every single contestant and this week she finally came up with Hanson Brothers but do you remember way back when she couldn't guess anything she was always guessing like major celebrities and now all of a sudden Nicole can guess everyone either the clues are getting easier and you know there you go or hmm she's smarter all of a sudden <laughs> first of all Black Swan has the most amazing voice once again I think that the Black Swan is Jojo and I also think it's amazing that she has a beautiful story that goes behind her persona, I guess you could say. And that's one of the things that I do like about The Masked Singer is that some of the contestants have comeback stories or they had a tragedy, you know, or some of them are truly inspirational. But the other times you've got like these fluff characters that just are just on the show for what? Just to get their name out there again, to just remind you that they still exist. I wish there were more people like the Hansons like JoJo, and some of the other contestants in the past who have been like them. Maybe this show would keep my interest more. Like, what if they really amped up this show? Because it's fun. It has a lot of fun elements, but if they had a real competition between people that are truly making a big comeback and have powerhouse voices, all of them, 
And so then you're just on the edge of your seat trying to figure out who's going to win and who's inside. Are you right? Are you correct? And really make this a true battle, you know, because at the end, there's usually and, you know, you guys will agree with me. I feel confident about this, that there's usually about three people who truly are going to make it to the end. And they're predictable, too. Usually we can always predict the last three, exactly who they're going to be every single season. And I think that is why I'm starting to lose interest. I want to be actually surprised. So now we know why Nick Lachey chose to be a piglet, because one of his little piglets suggested he be a pig when they were watching season one. So that makes it okay that he has the ugliest costume. <laughs> and it's a cute story, so that'll let that one fly. <laughs> I'm always talking about how I think it's absolutely ugly. <laughs> and it just one of these is not like the other. You've got these elaborate costumes, and then you've got this piglet. But if his little one said, Dad, you should be a piglet. If you go on the mass Singer, well, then that's just cute and adorable. So I'll eat my words. <laughs> But you put Nick Lachey in a piglet costume, which almost is kind of funny in a way. He's a muscular dude. <laughs> Even when he was on um, the Newlyweds with Jessica, he did everything himself. Even when they were moving, they have all this money and they would get a U-Haul and he would just take care of it all himself. Those were the things that I loved about Nick Lachey back in the day. Like, I don't even have to look at the clues. I'm going to look like a huge idiot if it's not Nick Lachey, but like, I don't even need to look at any clue. That's Nick Lachey. <laughs> Enzo likes Amarian, which is the Yeti. No, that was a really amazing performance by Amarian. He did a really good job, and that was beautiful. I love that song that he sang. That was really good. <laughs> He's going to be up there with the Russian Dolls and uh, JoJo for sure. So we're going to see who the Cloodle Doo actually is eventually, and we all thought it might have been Nick Cannon, and it wasn't. So that's interesting. Who do you guys think the Cloodle Doo is? Who do you think? Now, it would be pretty cool if the Cloodle Doo was maybe Jamie Foxx, like Robin Thicke said, only because wouldn't that just be funny? Because they always guess, you know, Jamie Foxx. I would love that. It needs to be someone big, it needs to be someone that makes it funny, not just some random dude. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Who do you guys think it might be? I think it would be cool if it was in all honesty, um, Jamie Foxx. But I would like for it to be a prior contestant. My prior contestants that I would like to see would be maybe Joey Fatone or, of course, I like Wayne Brady. Okay, and I just saw a commercial that had Jamie Foxx as a host for a TV show on Fox called Beat and Shazam, I believe. So maybe it could be Jamie Foxx. So if you watched my episode last week, I put the comparison between... Wiz Khalifa and Snoop Dogg together. Wiz Khalifa is who I think the chameleon is. I haven't, they haven't revealed who goes home this week yet. You guys already know, obviously, because you already watched the episode and I'm currently watching it right now. But I did want to say, I love Drop It Like It's Hot, Drop It Like It's Hot. I love that song. And <laughs> my friend Juliana thinks that this is Snoop Dogg. I think it's Wiz Khalifa. We'll find out. I do think he needs to go home. This week, I do, but I think it's so funny that he's singing a Snoop Dogg song. But there is a connection, yeah. So if you want to know the connection, check out my last episode. Okay, all right, I'm gonna finish dropping it like it's hot. I will say this, you guys everyone that performed this evening did an amazing job. There wasn't one person that I was like, ew. I think they all did a great job, so I do think it is tough who's gonna go home, but if I have to choose, I choose the chameleon. It's his turn. But do you see how they said the chameleon stays in his lane? And then Jen said something along the lines of, that's what's going to take you all the way to the end. That's the type of stuff that annoys me. Because I think it's cool when the celebrities mix it up and try a different genre. If they stay in their own lane, of course they're going to make it all the way to the end. Because they're not stepping past their boundary and challenging themselves. So that is why it's annoying to me. That's what I'm talking about, you know? Because it's not like the chameleon's horrible. I do enjoy the chameleon. But he stays in his lane. Uh, so it was interesting how we just started the very beginning of... This episode here with me getting a little bit over the mass Singer just this much well now guess what Corinne found out who went home the Russian dolls this is so frustrating to me 
I don't think I like The Masked Singer anymore. Sometimes good entertainers will go home and I figure, okay, something was up, like maybe they had, you know, a prior gig and so they were like, I can only do this many episodes and they kind of rigged it a little bit so that they would go home. I've kind of accepted that throughout the seasons. You know, maybe that's the situation with the Russian dolls, but why do I feel like not? I know, I know you guys are gonna be mad, so leave me comments in the comments section and tell me what you think because this is not cool. I, I really thought that they were going to win. And I actually thought to myself, okay, maybe it'll be Nick, the piglet, and the chameleon with Khalifa. It'll be between the two. And I might be a little shocked if they send Nick home, but I can kind of get on board with that. The chameleon or Nick. No, no. Anyways, you guys, I'm really upset. I'm annoyed. Yeah, I'm annoyed. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And the last question that I was going to ask before I got utterly pissed is who was your celebrity crush or idol when you were growing up? So for me, when I was growing up, I used to love the TV show Kids Incorporated. And so my idol was Stacy Ferguson, who grew up to be Fergie. But she was my idol before she became Fergie. <laughs> totally different. If you watch Kids Incorporated and you see Fergie as her her original birth name, Stacy Ferguson, totally opposite. But um, she was my idol growing up, loved her to pieces. I'd love to know the same from you guys. So give me some answers, comments, all that good stuff in the comment section. Let's get some conversation going. Much love, you guys. I hope you have the best rest of your week and the most amazing weekend possible. I'll see you guys next week. Who's going home next week? It's going to piss us off. Okay. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> Bye, guys.